Hi and welcome to our tip 003. My name is Adrian Cidre and in this tutorial we will learn how to do a spatial sampling in R and more specifically how to do random, regular and stratified sampling. A spatial sampling is the process of selecting a number of samples from a population where we will measure a number of variables. For instance, in forest engineering, we can divide our forest in different plots, like we have here different squares. Each of the squares, let's say, is representing 10 hectares of the terrain. So in random sampling, we will select a number of samples from all of the population. In this case, you see them in a darker yellow. So in these selected samples, we would measure some trees and some variables of the trees. The pros of random sampling are that it's easy to change the sample size at any time, and it's very easy also to calculate the sampling error. The cons are that random location can be difficult to locate in the field, and that the population might not be homogeneously covered. The next method is regular sampling. And with this figure, you can already intuit in what this method consists. And here we have a grid of different rows and columns where we distribute the different samples. This method has some pros like the easy location of samples, the sampling error is usually lower than in random sampling, and we have an uniform coverage of the population, since we are uh, selecting different samples that they are equidistant from the others. Then we have some cons, like it's harder to change the sampling size. If we already started to do these samples, it would be harder to add some more samples because we would destroy the regular samples. Because if we want to add some sample here in the middle, it would destroy all the sense of the regular sampling. And the other con is that the sampling error cannot be precisely calculated. The next method is a stratified random sampling, which has the same pros and cons as random sampling, but it has also other two pros. Here you can see that we have the squares that are green, orange, and blue. And these different uh, colors, they are representing different strata of our forest in this case. Let's say that here in orange we are representing pines, in green we are representing oaks and maybe in purple we are representing mixed forest. So for each of the forest structures we want to make different samples and if we use random sampling we might have maybe many different samples in only one forest type and other will be underrepresented. So here we have the pros that we will consider the spatial heterogeneity and we need less samples for same precision. And in the same sense, we have a stratified regular sampling. We have again the same population, but here instead of doing the random sampling, we are doing again the, the regular sampling. And here you can see by the colors that we will have the same number of samples in the different forest types. So the pros and cons are the same as in regular sampling, plus the pros of stratified sampling. Alright, so we will start now with the practice. Like always, we will start loading the packages. I start loading the Pacman package, and then we need to install the forest data package from my GitHub account because it's not available in CRAN, and then we will load the rest of the packages into R. So here we will use the forest data package to access forest types of Spain, the GISCO R to retrieve the study area, the map view package to generate some interactive visualizations, the SF package to manipulate vectorial data and also to do the sampling, and finally the tidyverse. So first of all, we will start loading the study area. So this function in GISCO get communes will get the municipalities of Spain, because I specified here the country uh, in which I want the communes. Then, when we have this object loaded, I will show it to you, and we will filter the Ermiwa municipality, which is one municipality in the island of Gomera in the Canary Islands. 
and then we will transform it to this uh, coordinate reference system because when we get this data is in the word geodesic system and I want to use projected coordinates. So now I will print it in the console and we can see that we have a total of 8204 features which uh, are different municipalities of Spain. Then we will filter Hermigua, so we have only one and I will transform the coordinate reference system because you can see that is the word geodesic system 84. So I will execute it and we can visualize it. So here we see our municipality, which is in this island, which is called Gomera, and it's in the Canary Islands. So now we will continue with the next step, which is uh, getting the forest types. And to get the forest types of Spain, we can go to this metadata underscore forest data, which is a list with different uh, attributes for the different functions. So if I scroll uh, until this section, we see here MFE provinces, and these are the available provinces for this function. So here I need to introduce the name of Santa Cruz de Tenerife, which is the province name that wraps this area. So if I execute this code and visualize it, we can see the forest types in this four different islands and the one that we are interested in is this one and more particularly one area right here. So if we want to extract the forest types of the municipality, we can go to the next step which is getting the intersection between the forest types and the Ermiwa municipality. So I will execute this code again and now I will visualize it. So there we have it. A, if I zoom out, you see that we are still in the Gomera Island, but we have only the forest types for this area. And we can click in the different polygons to see the attributes. And in the next step, what I'm doing is to translate this non-form R, which is uh, this column right here, which is in Spanish, so you will understand it better. So I will execute this part of the code. And you see here that I'm also filtering out the ones that contain the word palm and the word non-forested because I'm not interested in doing a sample, samples in the non-forested areas and neither in the palm areas because they are very small areas. So the next step is uh, actually I will visualize it before going to this step. So you can see how this looks. So we have the different forest types here. And you can see that there are many polygons. And if I zoom into this area, you can see that these polygons, they are of the same type. So what we can do is to try to dissolve the polygons that are adjacent and that they have the same, uh, the same attribute into just one polygon. And that's what this function here does. So we are first grouping by forest type because we have a total of 68 different polygons. So we are grouping by forest type, which are 10 different groups. And then we are summarizing the geometry by creating the union, which is basically dissolving the polygons. So if I execute this, we have in as a result a table of 10 different elements. So each of these are the 10 groups that we had before by forest type. So if I execute this and visualize it, we can see that now all this area is just one polygon. So now that we have our study area, we can go to the last part of the script, which is making the sampling. And we will start with the random sampling, which is the simplest one. So here I'm taking this, uh, this object and I'm using the stsample function from the SF package. And I want to create a sam uh, 200 samples and I want them to be random. So if I execute this part of the code, you will see that this is not an SF object, but this is, if I copy this, oops, not this, but uh, this part of the code, and I ask for the class of this object, you see that this is an SFC point. So we need to convert it to SF object so we can visualize it. So I will execute it, and we will visualize the, the forest types and the different points. And here we have them. So we have a total of 200 different points. And since this is a random sampling, if I execute it again, we will get a different result. 
So now the points, they are in different areas. So if we want to have the same result all the time, we need to use the setSeed function and insert here a number. So if I say, for instance, 137 and I execute all this code all together, we have this result. And if I execute it again, it should be exactly the same. But if I change this for other number, for instance, 123, and I execute it again, you will see that the points, they are different. So now we will go to the next part, which is the regular sampling. And this is pretty easy. We just need to change the type to regular and the rest of the parameters are exactly the same. And here we don't need to use any seed because the samples, when they are regular, they will be the same all the time. So if I execute this code all together, you see that we have a regular sampling. So the next one is the stratified random sampling. And our strata are the different forest types. So here what I want to do is to create uh, 10 different samples for each of the different forest types. So first I need to know how many groups we have. So I can execute this, this code, which is taking the unique values of this forest type column. So we get all of these values. And if I ask for the length, we have the, the number 10. And it's what I have here. So now in this function, st sample in the size argument, I can introduce a vector. So if I print this code, you will see that this is a vector uh, of the length and group. So of length 10, and we, we have the number 10 for each of them. So in order to make this clear, if I put here 20, for instance, I would create a sample or 10 samples of the number 20. But I'm interested on, on 10 samples for each of the groups, so I will do it like this. And if I execute this and use the map view function again, now we should have 10 different points in each of the different groups of forest types. And if we go here, you will see that there we have some forest types that they are smaller than, for instance, these other mixtures of Macaronesian broadleaves. And you see that the points, they are all uh, more together. So here we have two, six, eight, and here we have other two. So you can see that in this radiata pine forest, we have 10 points. But if you are a skeptic and you want to, to check if we really have 10 different points for each of the groups, you can use here the stjoin function to join uh, these two datasets. So here we have the, the points because we have 100 features and we join them with the forest type. So basically to the points that we created before, we are adding the column of the forest type. And if we count by forest type, you will see that we have 10 in every of them. So now we will go to the stratified regular sampling. So we will start again with our forest types. I will print it again so we remember how this looks like. And here in the st sample function, I'm doing exactly the same, introducing a vector of, uh, of length 10 with the number 10. And here we have the length 10 because this I didn't explain it before, so it will be uh, 10 samples for this row, 10 for this row, 10 for this row, and so on. And if you write here a vector of different uh, length, for instance, let's say 10, 20, what will happen is that this first row will get 10 samples, this one will get 20, and then we will repeat it again. This will have 10, 20, 10, 20, 10, 20, and so on. So I will do control C so we get our previous uh, our previous size. So I will execute this and I will visualize it. So there we have it. And now this sample is regular but by group. So if you zoom in to this area, you will see that this Macaronesian broad leaves, you have this regular uh, sampling, but it's only regular within this strata. And if you go, for instance, to this one right here, you will see that this is regular, but only for this one and the others are regular 
independently. And if you want to check how many samples do you have in each of the groups, we can use the same function as before. And you will see that in some of them, you won't have exactly 10. You will have maybe a bit more or a bit less. Because in a regular sampling, when you are creating a grid, sometimes you need to, to put a bit more or a bit less. And that's why they are not 10 in all of them. Uh, but this might be not helpful sometimes because in this case we have polygons or forest types where the area is much bigger than in others. So we maybe want to do the sampling depending on the area of the different forest types. And this is what we will do in these five steps. So if I print this part of the code, you will see that we are adding the area in hectares. And you see that, for instance, this Fayal Brezal, it has more than 1000 hectares, while these mixtures of native conifers in the Macaronesian biogeography bio region, it has only 12 hectares. So it doesn't make sense to have 10 samples for this one and also 10 samples for this one. So what do I want to do is to create one sample for 20 hectares and if the area is less than 50 hectares, I want to do just one sample for 10 hectares. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm adding a new column where if the area is greater or equal than 50 hectares, I want to make samples which are the area divided by 20. And in the case that the area is less than 50, I want the area divided by 10. So I will execute it and I will print it again in the console. So for this Aleppo pine forest, we will have four samples. For this one, we will have 11. And for this one, where we have more than 1000 hectares, we will have 59 samples. And the procedure is the same as before. So we start with our data. We pipe it into the ST sample function. The size will be this column. So this is a vector as before, but it doesn't have uh, all the time the, name, the same number. Then I'm using regular in this case, you can use also random in the case that you prefer a stratified random sampling and convert it to SF. So I will execute it and we will visualize it. So now this looks much better. So for each of the different forest types, we will have a number of samples that depends on the area of that forest type. And it will be regular only within that forest type independently of the others. And finally, we can check the number of samples by group. So if I execute this code, you will see that uh, we specify this number of samples. But as I told you before, since it's regular, there might be a bit more or a bit less. So this is good to check to know uh, the exact number of samples that we have. But if you use random, you will see that uh, the number will be exactly the same. So I will execute, visualize it. So there it is. And finally, check the number of samples per group. And here you will see that the number is exactly the same as we specified in the function.